Ooh, bam, bam, damn. What's up, my dude? So I cannot believe what has happened with Justin Barsha. I never would have thought in my entire life he would come out here and get two podiums in the first two races after I don't has he even gotten a podium at all in the past five, four or five years. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it, dude. It's like a whole new Justin Barsha, and on a bike that he's barely even rode on, too. Brand new team. He's never been on this team before. Never been on this bike. Like, what? (laughs) What is going on here? So, if you guys don't know, which if you're a motocross fan, you probably should know some of this stuff, but Justin Barsha was like this big 250 rider in Supercross. He got two Supercross titles, if I'm not mistaken, so he was kind of like hyped up as being, you know, one of the next big Supercross champions, and he gets out there in his first 450 uh, Supercross year, and he actually wins a couple of 450 main events, and for the next four or five years, no joke, he's not won a single thing, except I think he might have won an out- one outdoors race or something like that, but I mean, he's been nowhere even close, and it's kind of shocked the world because we all thought Justin Barsha would just be right up there, you know, possibly winning a championship like four years ago and he's just fell completely off man i mean about as hard as you could fall off at that level you know went from like teetotally top tier rider to like you'd be lucky if barsha got a fifth you know it'd be considered pretty good if he got a fifth and then now all of the sudden (laughs) like four years later he gets on this brand new team and he's been on the bike for like what maybe I don't know. You, you guys saw him there at uh, the Monster Energy Cup on a privateer Honda. And here he is on a factory Yamaha and comes out in podiums the first two races. Leads both of the main events at one point in time. Like, oh my gosh. Man, this just goes to show you how much it's all mental. It's all mental. So much of it is. Like, his, I, f- I think his mindset just completely changed. Once he got on that privateer bike, he was like, whoa, dude. It's time to to go all or nothing. And I've, I've said that from day one about basically anything like this where it's like, um, you know, you're trying to be the best at anything. You're trying to be the best at motocross, whether that's gaming or real life or whatever. Whatever it is that you're trying to be the best at, there's a lot of other people that are also trying to be the best at that. So if it's not almost like a do-or-die situation, if it's not like you want it so bad that if you don't get it, it's like like you're basically dying in a sense, then then you're never going to be able to do it. You know, it almost takes having like a do-or-die mentality for that kind of stuff before you really start pushing it to that absolute limit like, like you have to to do well on that stuff. Um, when there's just so much competition like that. And I feel like Barsha going to the privateer bike, it gave him that like super wake up call. Like, okay, it's time to take this really serious. Um, and it's just, he's been through different teams, a couple different bikes. He was on the Yamaha for JGR and then went to, uh, he was on Suzuki JGR. I'm pretty for sure for like a year, maybe, I don't know. He went through a bunch of injuries, Um, Like, I mean, seriously, for the past four years in Supercross for Barsha, it's just been like injury after injury after injury, and just he can't ever seem to get it going. And now it's just like, bam, bam, one, two, baby, A1 and Houston. Can you believe that? (laughs) Podiums in both of them, dude, bam, bam, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my gosh. I, I don't know. This is probably the biggest shocker for me out of any of it. Just because you just don't see this very often. Where it's like someone that seems totally down and out. And they haven't even really had like a good Supercross season in four years. Get on a brand new bike and then just like that they're up on a podium spot twice in a row. What? How does that even happen, man? I don't know. That is just crazy unbelievable. But... So, Barsha, I mean, he looks good, dude. Like, I don't, and he's only going to get better from here. And it was only a six month or six race, my my bad, not six months. That would be the whole entire championship. uh, Six race signing period for on this new Yamaha team in place of Davey Millsap, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, So, they only had him signed for like half of the season, basically, uh, maybe a little bit under. And he comes out there and podiums twice. Like, 
what? <laughs> I mean, Cooper Webb, their other main rider, is not even close to podiuming on that stuff. And, I mean, I, I don't mean to show, throw any shade at Davy Millsaps, but that would have been like a very good finish for Millsaps on top of everything else. And here they are, got a guy that they're, they only have him signed for six races and he podiums twice. <laughs> Pretty sure that's going to be changing here recently. I think you're going to be seeing Barsha on that team for the rest of the year, indoors and out. That's my prediction there, but it's just so cool to see. But one thing I want you, all of you guys, just to recognize and remember is the fact that, like, just think about how, you know, Dungy is not there anymore. So if you just added Dungy in there, that would have, odds are, that probably would have knocked Barsha right off the podium in both of them races. Or if Tomac just wouldn't have crashed out in the first race, odds are that would have knocked out Barsha off the podium in both of those races. So it's crazy how when you really do think about it, like it's all about when you do well, who else is doing well, who all's there. Um, like how good one particular person is riding that night. You know, there's so many different factors that goes into it that it's just unbelievable, you know? Like, it's so easy for someone to get two podiums all of a sudden and everyone kind of goes crazy, but once Tomac gets back in there and let's just say, you know, Dungy and Villapoto was still in there, then, I mean, it'd be like a whole different situation. It's so, isn't it bizarre how that is, where it's like when you think about the people that aren't there or the people that are are there at certain times and stuff it can totally change your like opinion and outlook on all of everybody's finishes you know that's why i just think the era of villapoto was like so amazing in the 450s just because there were so many guys there uh, seemed like all the time but then it, it has to revolve you know it has to go to other faster guys and that's what i was kind of saying about tomac so you know now it's kind of going into like tomac muskan anderson roxon he's starting to get faster now so that that in itself could knock Barsha off the podium if he just stays at his steady pace he's got here. But, um, you know, like, I know people are going to get excited about him getting two podium finishes, but Barsha's going to have to kick it up a notch. You know, I want some people to realize that, like, when Muskan gets back and going, when Tomac gets back and going, and Roxon's, like, back in his winning potential ways, I mean, when it gets back to that, it's going to be really hard to get on the box. I think Barsha just caught it at quite the perfectamundo time here. <laughs> he really did. And sometimes it happens like that. I mean, you could say Dungy's first 450 championship was like that, and, the, and it was a full-blown championship. There's so many times where people's won championships where if they would have been on the other coast, there's no way they would have won. So it's just a lot of racing. It's just like I don't even necessarily want to call it luck because I do think, you know, the harder you work, the more lucky you get and stuff like that. But there, there is a certain element to it. There really is. Um, but it's just, I mean, if you got to look at it from the side and the standpoint too of like, well, if, uh, you know, if this guy didn't show up or whatever, then, like if he was hurt or he crashed or whatever the case may be, then you are the man that won that night. So, you know, like Tomac being out like he has been, I mean, whoever's winning now with Tomac out, they're they're the the worthy winner of that because Tomac rode a little too hard and that's part of that's part of Supercross. You know, there's gotta figure out your limits to it and all that stuff. And I just feel like um with Barsha anyways, it's just it's unbelievable that he's able to to do it in the way that he did. I mean, it's just unreal. You, everyone would have been counting Barsha totally out. Uh, I mean, at the bare minimum, you would have thought it would have took Barsha like a half a season to even remotely be thinking about getting back on the podium. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. It would have at least probably taken that long, you know, um, to even be thinking that, but to just come out at A1 and then back it up with the next race with a podium as well. And what's cool is like Barsha actually came back in that race. He fell back to fourth and then came back to third. So he was, he was up there fighting for it, you know, but his starts are just on point this year, man. But I'm excited for Barsha. It's interesting how in some of his interviews, he's been saying things like, 
you know, I'm, I know I've been known as this Barsha guy, but um, it seems like he's kind of changed his ways somewhat on the 450. He's not so much like he was before. Uh, so I don't know, man. Maybe he's kind of learned his way a little bit. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But it's it's an interesting turn of events here because with Muscan crashing out and with, um, you know, Tomac doing what he did, well, now it's like, Oh, I'm just trying to remember all these rhythms on these old school reflex tracks. My bad. My brain's like trying to do a hundred things at once right now. Um, but it's interesting though, because shit, Barsha could win the championship. Like, I mean, Tomac and Muscan at this point are going to have to do really well to get back to where they was. Um, you know, you got Roxon right there in the championship and then Anderson right there in the championship with the points lead. So, uh, it's it's shaken up in a very interesting way. Like the two people we thought would have been at the front is like, you know, crashed out basically at this point. So uh, it's so cool to see Barsha back up at the front. Um, it just, I mean, that just goes to show you, man. Anyone can get it at any time, no matter. You know, everyone talks about well, they've had their training for this many years and they've done this for this many years, or they're with this kind of thing, or they've got this kind of trainer, or whatever the case may be. You know, it's it just makes it hard to believe that it's anything but your own inner want for it, more so than anything else. I mean, I think that is downright the most important part, and I just feel like Bar should just prove that to everybody. You know, it don't matter if I've only been on this bike for a couple weeks. It don't matter that I've been completely sucking for the past four years and don't have any idea what was going on. It don't matter. I'm going to come out here and lead this damn main event in Anaheim 1 and Houston and podium both of them bitches. Like, what? <laughs> it's just amazing. It's cool cool to see it, man. Uh, very proud of Barsha for that. But either way, appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Later, dudes.